Hi there, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to go through a rundown of programming language news from 2022. Here's our current top 10 on my Languish Trends tool. For the new language breaking in is Markdown, though I'm a little bit suspicious about this. Yes, Markdown is a widely used language, but I'm not sure that's why it's appearing here. If we look at the metric we're using, we see that Markdown does not appear high in the GitHub stars, nor the Stack Overflow questions, but it does in GitHub issues. Very high, in fact. And from GitHub, I only get the quote-unquote primary language for each repo. So I suspect this is a small number of repos, which are labeled Markdown, that have a lot of issues on them. But I haven't dug into that yet. Meanwhile, let's go back to mean score and hide HTML and Markdown for the moment and bring up PHP and Rust instead. Here we see that PHP has fallen just below C and Rust hasn't quite caught up, in part because C had a good quarter. But it seems likely that Rust will overtake it at some point in the near future, at least for the metrics I'm using here. Meanwhile, we do see that Python had a great quarter and that while TypeScript growth usually compensates for JavaScript fall, they both went down this past quarter. Java also had an okay quarter, though in general has been coming down for a few years. And C++ and C Sharp have been steady for a long time. And Go is recently fairly steady after previous years of growth. C also is steady overall as well. Anyway, let's catch some news from these languages. Starting with Python, which had a 3.11 release out in 2022, and it had a number of interesting features. The probably most interesting was the emphasis on making it run faster. One of the places you can read up on this is this blog post from Jay Miller at Microsoft, where Guido Van Rossum himself also works these days. Meanwhile, in ECMAScript slash JavaScript land, there were a number of new proposals that got through the TC39 committee and were standardized this past year, such as top level await, at for negative indexing, class fields, and more. There also were a couple of new proposals accepted for standardization in 2023. As for the rising star of TypeScript, they just celebrated their 10th anniversary last year. Sometimes it's hard to remember how long things have been going on. And as usual, they had a number of releases, including more interesting type analysis, and also tooling support in a number of ways, including go to source definition. It's always awkward when you say, hey, go to definition in VS Code, and you get the d.ts file that only has the declaration. So this still isn't perfect, but the idea you could actually go to the source of something and read the code, that's a nice improvement. And something that's been lacking quite a bit in that tool chain. Hopefully this continues to improve. They've also worked on performance for TypeScript as well. On to Java, we had two releases per the new standard release schedule, which includes new things in the standard library, as well as continued work on pattern matching. In third preview by JDK19, this Linux RISC-V is also interesting looking, and structured concurrency also seems to be going somewhere. Meanwhile, C++ is getting ready for a new release in 2023. And digging through the reports can be quite overwhelming. CPP reference is one place to get a simpler list of things going on. We see things such as if const eval and multidimensional subscript operator, among many other things. So on this multidimensional subscript operator, C23 will finally allow you to use square brackets with multiple parameters, rather than seeing this as a comma operator. And different opinions are going on around about this, but something some people looked for for quite a while. In C Sharp news, .NET 7 came out last year with C Sharp 11, including some improvements to strings and also static members inside of interfaces, which seems to be bringing fancier typing in the direction of various functional languages out there. And of course, along with a new .NET release comes a new release of F Sharp as well, which among other things is focused on supporting the updates in .NET generally that correspond to the c -sharp feature we just talked about. Another emphasis of .NET 7 was native ahead of time deployment, or in other words, pre-packaging executables as native code that just run. They put a lot more emphasis into it in this release. And there's a separate third-party project called B-flat that I just barely heard about, despite having over 2,000 stars on GitHub, that focuses on making this cross-compilation of c -sharp between Linux and Windows very straightforward. So there's an example. Meanwhile, Go had multiple releases this past year, including General Quality of Life, Go 1.19, and the much more attention-getting earlier Go 1.18 that finally had generics. So yep, that's the thing in Go now. 
And for your C language news, I highly recommend always coming to the blog of project editor Jeanine Manid. And C, just like C++, is expecting a new release in 2023. There's a bunch of things you could dig through here as well. Some things I happen to notice include the embed preprocessor directive, which will take files and embed them into your program executable for easy access to those bytes. There's also a limited form of local variable type inference. And yes, some people are unhappy about it. Maybe take a look at it before making a judgment of your own. Meanwhile, PHP saw a new release with continued language improvements such as read-only classes and union and intersection types, which we can see in these examples here, and a bit of literal types as well, as we see PHP static typing to continue to progress. Rust, of course, also has a regular release schedule. Some of the highlights that I happened to notice were easy string interpolation for the print macros, inline assembly, more const function goodness, scope threads, which allow borrowing from the local stack frame, and a real biggie, generic associated types, which I still need to study, but it's definitely a big deal. Now we move on to the next set of languages. And I included Rust again from before, just so we can see it in context of the others we're looking at. And I'm also gonna remove Ruby here after we see the current trajectory for it. In any case, Ruby is not at its historical heights on GitHub, though it's been a little more stable in recent years. Let's take it out so we can see the others better in context. The next previous peak we had was from Swift, back at the peak of its attention. It has been somewhat stable again recently in the past couple years or so. Meanwhile, we see Kotlin may be on a steady climb, R may be a little bit down, and where most of its attention here is from Stack Overflow. Dart is somewhat stable recently, SQL may be as well, Lua has been going up, PowerShell stable, and Scala is on a gradual long-term downward trend at least from the places where I'm getting metrics. Meanwhile, let's look what's going on in some of these languages. One of the main things happening in Kotlin during the past year is the focus on their new compiler, which is designed to provide performance improvements. And one of the things R has focused on in their releases for this year is the Windows port. Moving on to Dart, we see a few releases during the past year, including improvements to Objective-C and Swift interop, and the transition toward plans for Dart 3 where null safety goes from optional to the default behavior. That's not out yet though. Swift also has seen some releases. And among the things they've worked on that I find especially interesting is the new regex library, which includes semi-traditional regex syntax, but really under the hood, it's a structured regex representation with quite a bit of extensibility. And I think this is a very exciting development in regex space. Notice also here the typed named match groups. And as usual, Ruby had its new release on Christmas, in this case, 3.2, which includes a port of C Ruby to Wasm and Wazi, meaning that they're giving first class support to the idea of running Ruby in your web browser. Beyond that, they also have a virtual file system built on top of Wazi so that you can pack Ruby and your own application into a single Wasm file. Now I wanna try this in the reference of my latest video where I used Wasmer to cross compile to native applications. So I'm inclined to believe if you can get one of these bundles, you can then compile your Ruby app to arbitrary operating systems and binaries. Could be fun to see. Also in Ruby, their YJIT compiler is now production ready, and there's some language improvements as well. Meanwhile, Lua saw a bug fix release, as well as some community things, and Scala 3.2 came out with a variety of new features and support for code coverage testing within Scala 3. Looking at the next set of languages, we see that Solidity has peaked about a year ago and may be in gradual decline. And many other languages in this area are unfortunately coming down or steady state in recent times, even though some of these really are amazing languages. And worth pointing out that the plots here are sort of pie slice or market share, not the total amount of users. So it's possible the total amount of users is up in some of these languages, just that for the metrics I'm capturing here, it's a smaller percentage of the whole. CMake seems to be going up-ish. GDScript is also increasing which is a scripting language for the Godot game engine, and probably tied to the gradually increased popularity of Godot. Nix also is going up over time, whereas OCaml is more down or steady, which is unfortunate. So let's look at these languages in more detail. Most of the Solidity releases seem to be focused just on gradual improvement. And in Haskell space, GHC saw its 9.4 release this year with a number of improvements and some breaking changes. And Julia 1.8 came out with language improvements such as const fields on mutable structs, typed globals, and so on. But what's more interesting is what's coming up soon in Julia space. 
One of the biggest problems with Julia over time has been getting all of the things jitted on warm-up when you first start up a Julia console. Sometimes they talk about time to first plot. Well, it seems like their caching is greatly improved in upcoming Julia 1.9 betas, which should greatly improve the user experience of running one-off apps or just when you're jumping into a new interactive session. Elixir 114 came out this past year with focus on debugging and developer experience. Perhaps more interesting is the post from Jose Valim looking toward the future and possible static type checking for Elixir. Closure 111 came out with some improvements to language and libraries. And here, looking back at the GD script language, it's hard to keep tabs on every little thing that's happened during all the releases during the year, but they're working toward the Godot 4.0 release, which overall should see a lot of improvement in GD script overall. And finally, for this group, I want to focus on OCaml 5 which is a dramatically large and exciting new release of OCaml, which includes support for shared memory parallelism and also effect handlers. From the perspective of OCaml, this should be a game changer, and I definitely want to take a look at this on my channel in the upcoming year. So to our next batch of languages, kept GD script here for reference, but before we get too far into these, I'm gonna take out Hacks and Erlang because their peaks make it harder to see what's going on for the others. Hex has been somewhat stable in recent years, some up, some downs. Erlang overall is on a gradual downward trend, which is unfortunate, but again, the community is still very strong, and lots of people are in that space. Okay, we still have a messy bunch of languages here, but it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. There again is our GD script rise. Zeg also has been on a gradual rise, if we notice here, with this dramatic peak at Q3 of the past year. I believe this is largely in response to the Bun JavaScript engine, whose infrastructure is developed in Zig. That brought a lot of attention to the language, and especially on the bun repo. But we see here that sometimes when a language jumps up, it falls back down again later. But overall, Zig has a nice upward trend. Pascal also is holding strong, and Fortran approximately as well. Nim is on a very noisy but gradual incline, and F Sharp sadly might be a little bit down. And here's a quick look through some other languages as well. Let's see some details. The big news for Zig is that the O10 release came out, which focuses primarily on the self-hosted Zig compiler, meaning that Zig's compiler is now written in Zig, and they even deleted the old bootstrap implementation, which they were quite happy about. And I recommend taking a look sometime at how they used Wasm or WebAssembly to get the job done. In NIM, various patch releases came out. The bigger news is that they're getting close to a NIM 2.0 release. My understanding is that NIM 2.0 is still approximately compatible with NIM 1.0 code. And my understanding is you can use NIM 1.0 and NIM 2.0 libraries together. But your own code that's 2.0 compatible needs to be ready for different defaults. And so look carefully through these backward compatibility notes. Among other things, the cyclical reference counter is the new default memory management strategy. And Erlang saw a new release this past year including some improvements to the JIT, including for 64-bit ARM processors. And if I saw correctly, WebAssembly has no new finished proposals, but multiple things got moved to stage three, including threads and garbage collection. The Crystal language saw some releases last year, including the 1.6 release, and I already just had the 1.7 release this year. So it's nice to see active development happening there, including continually improved support for Windows. And as usual, the D language saw quite a bit of activity, including multiple releases with large numbers of changes. They stay busy and move forward. And during 2022, the Odin language also saw its regular monthly release cycle. For those who watch my channel, they know that Odin is one of the languages I like to pay attention to. And back to the Erlang category, Gleam is a statically typed language for the Beam virtual machine and has seen a number of good releases this year as well, including improved support for TypeScript in its JavaScript compiler target, and also, interopping better with Elixir when compiling for Beam. The Idris 2 language has also seen continued work this past year, including some notable language changes, such as record update syntax and changes to string interpolation. And the Futhark functional array processing language, if you look closely in this release here from during the past year, they've added experimental and undocumented support for automatic differentiation. That's useful for optimization tasks, including machine learning. I'll probably have to look into that at some point. The Grain language also saw a release this year, which I find to be a very approachable variation on OCaml or the ML language space, only with its focus on WebAssembly output and fitting into the Wasm ecosystem. There's another variation on OCaml 
Rescript 10.0 came out, which they say is the first community-powered release. So work is ongoing there as well. Now looking at other new languages I haven't really covered much before, but I really need to get into. I'm trying to keep an eye on Rock. This language is sort of like Elm, but with a systems programming language focus. It compiles to machine code or to WebAssembly. And there's a lot of interesting things here like functional button place and so on. And I really need to spend some time in it. Another big news item from last year was slides finally with some details on the Verse programming language, which Simon Peyton Jones of Haskell fame has been spending time on these days at Epic Games. Verse is both functional and logic based, sort of like Prolog. And I highly recommend taking a look through these slides. In system space, I also want to look a little bit more at the Veil programming language, which has some unique approaches to safety, including generational references and more. And finally, of languages that caught my eye this past year, there's Val, which borrows heavily from Swift to emphasize mutable value semantics. So I find this is sort of like what I got used to in MATLAB, only more at a systems programming language level. And I'm really curious to try this out sometime. And interestingly enough, they also mention Zig and Vale as vaguely related languages. Yes, Val and Vale are two separate things, and they both got my eye. And maybe finally, finally, I've also been paying some attention to the C3 language, which in the C alternative space is a little bit closer to traditional C semantics than some of the others. Only it brings a number of modern features along with it. Anyway, this is a tour through language news and upcoming languages of things that caught my eye. And I'm sure I missed a whole lot as well. So feel free to mention on what I missed in the comments to the video. Looking forward to a great 2023. Bye y'all.